Okay, so there are different types of wallets out there, and a wallet is basically something which you hold and store your cryptocurrencies in. And there are two main types. You have a hot wallet and also a cold wallet, uh, as you can probably guess. Now, the hot wallet, there, there's quite a few. So you have things like uh, online wallets, so things where it, it's basically... Uh, something which either plugs into your um, your internet browser like Chrome, etc., um, or you just have an online account uh, where you can send stuff to. And then you also have uh, software wallets where you can either download onto your mobile phone or onto your PC or laptop, etc. Now, the thing is, hot wallets need to be avoided at all costs. Uh, and mainly being is that they're they're very easy to be. To be hacked and pretty much anyone that's ever been hacked um, holding cryptocurrencies and it's been due to uh, either the exchange itself being hacked or their hot wallets have been been hacked because there are they're ways um, I mean all over the internet that I mean there are people saying sharing how they, they're hacking certain things so um, for example if we have a look at um, a company called jacks.io Loads of people are using Jax.io because it's quite convenient. However, it's it's now hackable. Um, and even when the hacker himself said, um, in fact, let's find that article. I'll show. Okay, so there there are a few um, articles out there about that. But basically, um, a hacker managed to to find out how to um, effectively hack into a, a Jax account. And then when he um, contacted Jax themselves, this is basically what they said. So the CTO, the Chief Techno Techno um, Technology Officer, um, said basically uh, Jax is a hot wallet um, suitable for small amounts um, and basically for convenience and that it is not a cold storage uh, amount. So basically, if, you, if you've got a lot and you want a cold store, um, don't use Jax. So... Yeah, at least be aware of that because uh, there are a lot of people using it when they shouldn't. So moving on to cold wallets then. Um, you basically have two types. You have a hardware wallet and uh, a paper wallet. Now a hardware wallet is something like, uh, it's normally in the form of a USB stick. And there are different types of hardware wallets out there from Trezor to Ledger Nano S. And, um, and there's going to be a lot more. I'm trying to make this... Um, this course undated as as possible um, because who knows I mean things are moving so fast that hell in a year or so some of these these wallets may not even exist um, yeah so basically you, you you're storing your cryptos on um, on a USB stick pretty much uh, and they, they are quite easy to set up you don't need to be tech savvy uh, however the best type of wallet to use for long-term storage for, you know, if you have a lot of cryptos, is to get a paper wallet. And that's basically where you're storing your, um, the, the relevant information, uh, like the, the your, your private key, on, on a piece of paper. And you can then do what you wish. So here is basically the, 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 the actual process. And I'm, I'm not a, a techie person at all, so I have to put things into six-year-old language. So imagine you go to a market square and you're out in the market to try and buy some diamonds. So you you go to an exchange or some you know market man selling diamonds. You buy the diamonds. Now obviously you need to get home. Um, so what happens is you you probably end up putting the diamonds in your pocket, wallet, purse, handbag, whatever, down your pants, <laughs> um, and then you go home, and then you put those diamonds into some sort of safe or. Um, a safety deposit box either in a bank or an external storage company etc uh, but most people will probably put it in a safe somewhere in in your home so that's what you do when you're buying diamonds now with cryptos um, it's somewhat well it's pretty much the same so you go and buy your altcoins your altcoins so your alternative coins other other it's basically another word for crypto coins um, you then so people then may put them into a hot wallet uh, like a, a, a software or an online based wallet and a lot of people stop there and they think right that's it that's me done uh, it, it's all safe but it's not because by using a hot wallet it's no different than walking around with you know I mean if you're gonna buy 10 grand's worth of cryptos it's like putting 10,000 uh, pounds in 50 quid notes in your pocket 
at some point, someone's going to notice those red notes and, um, and pickpocket you or, or steal your wallet, etc. So it's not safe. So basically, what you then need to do is put your altcoins in a cold wallet, whether it's a um, you know a USB stick which you then put in a safe or a paper wallet which you print out a few times and put somewhere safe. Um, but you, you need to understand that if you lose your cold wallet, so your paper wallet or USB stick, it's game over. You've lost it. So the two things that you really need to know about a paper wallet, which is basically our recommended and preferred um, route, is it comes with two things, a public address and a private key. So the public address is you can share with anyone. Um, you, yeah, so if any, basically you effectively, this is what you use to send coins into. So if, for example, you... I don't know, someone wanted to send you some, I don't know, uh, crypto coins or uh, cryptocurrencies of some sort. You send them this public address and they then deposit the, the, the cryptos into that address. And then all of a sudden, um, you've got your cryptos in, in your paper wallet. And your private key is something which you should never, ever, ever, ever share with anyone. Uh, and this is the thing which basically unlocks... Um, the key so uh, unlocks your crypto so for example let's say you know you put stuff into a paper wallet if you lose that private key or it gets torn up or whatever there's no way to take those cryptos from that wallet um, and, and yeah, get them out so you're losing them forever basically um, so yeah that you you must need you, you need to keep and it, it's, it's pretty crazy because you can effectively like I'm holding a piece of paper here like you can it's 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 I just I just find it quite uh, amazing with my <laughs> my very basic mind that I can basically send money or send um, you know cryptocurrency coins and altcoins etc to this piece of paper and then that's it that is that yeah I'm basically I can store well and so I could basically like I could put I know ten million pounds into this piece of paper put it in my pocket. Uh, cross borders, you know, go to another country, and then there, there you go. I've got all of it on, on, yeah, on a piece of paper, my whole wealth. Or if you're, you know, you can memorize a private key, and then you can walk around with all of your wealth in your head if you if you wish. So they're they're the things about a paper wallet, and um, yeah, and then also you need your, yeah, so you need your private key to when you want to send your coins out. And later on in the course, we'll, we'll go through that. So I hope that makes sense. Oh, 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 oh,